Hello guys, Salman Nasim again. Welcome to the second lecture of our course. We have already learned about a three-point lighting in a previous lecture. But today, in today's lecture, we'll add the material. When I'm saying material, in Blender, it's mean texture. For example, I'll select this one and I will uh, press the Z and go to the render preview button. And will I will go in a material section. Uh, if I change the base color to the red, you will see that the color is automatically changed on the cube. Let's create something unique with the help of ChatGPT. So I have written down the prompt create a python code for Blender in which you create a UV sphere with 10 segments and 10 rings. Each face should have the different material. Let's see. So it's give me a very short code. Let's run it into our Blender. But before doing that, I will select every sink and delete it. I will paste the code over here and click on run button. So it add the UV sphere with the material for each section I think we can test it by just clicking on a select button. Uh, first of all we'll have to deselect and click on a select button. If we go in a uh, wireframe you, you can see that there is a selection over here. But the problem is every material have the same color that's why we are not seeing the impact of that material in on our UV sphere. So we will uh, we will ask the chat GPT to fix the code because we need a different color on each and every material. So I have had the prompt that add the uh, it's add it's add the material on every face, but all of them are the same color. I need every face should have different color material and don't repeat the color. Let's see what it give us. It have the loop is uh, is give us the loop that uh, that's why it is changing the material of course and we'll copy the uh, we'll copy the code and come to blender let's see how it's you have seen that there is an error at downstairs and currently there is a no material currently there is no extra material for that so for that we'll add another window to copy paste the error we'll we have split the window and and i will add their info so with the info we have this value over here we'll copy we'll copy this and we'll give it to the chat gpt and tell him we'll tell him to fix it so that is the way we'll easily copy paste the error in the chat gpt so i can copy again and we'll delete the sphere again and now we'll go there and paste the script so what is so what's the info window does is actually record everything which we have done in a platter we'll run the script again you have seen that there is the material on each and every face of of our sphere so we have achieved that with our chat gpt code but let's see how it look like in a rendering but for that i will add a plane i will scale up scale it up a little bit and I will bring it down like that and uh, now what what I will do I will scale it a little bit more now I will hide this by clicking here and here now we'll go in a render mode currently we are in a EV and there is uh, only environmental lighting in our scene so that's it look like that and if we switch our rendering agent to cycles, uh, so you will see there is a realistic light of impacting and there are few shadows over there. So what is the difference between cycles and EV? Uh, the cycle is a physical based rendering engine in a blender which simulate a realistic behavior of lighting. In simple word, it's use a ray tracing for lighting, shadows and reflection. So because of that, because of its realistic behavior of lighting, the cycle is very much slow as compared to EV. So as per EV, it is a real time rendering engine which is uh, mostly used in a gaming. For example, if we go in, uh, for example, we are playing in a game and we have move over character. There is no need of rendering extra stuff for over there in a games. It's used techniques like rasterization and screen face reflection. Because of that, EV is very fast, but we'll have to compromise on rendering quality. Let's see what is the difference between rasterization and ray tracing. Let's google it. We'll have a few illustrations over here. Uh, 
uh, you have seen this rasterization there is a camera and there is an object in front of it it will automatically project the image in front of it the same technique which is used in a vector graphic and in a ray trace engine there is a camera and there is a projection image we will see in a uh, we, if we render something we will see the projection image in front of camera and there are uh, the ray passes there is ray passes from the camera to the object and uh, and also see the and also get the light from the lighting source and project the image to this part like if i uh, uh, enlarge it you can see that there is a shadow because of this light and you will see the image over uh, you will see the final image in a 2d format like that let's uh, uh, before ending this lecture let's test it by placing the camera in our scene i will go there and add the camera uh, and bring it back this one and i will go there and add the camera and i will press ctrl alt 0 to bring it over here and i will unhide these stuff to check uh, to check everything uh switch to and we will i will reduce the sample rate so i will reduce the samples to 32 on a viewport and also on a render and i will go there and render the image let's see with the 32 samples how much time it will take to render this specific sphere with the different materials and all this on on every face so they so to render this image it uh, the cycles take a 20 second there is a no there is no light in a scene we are uh, relying on an environmental light which we will see in our word section we'll go in a ev and test it for that that how much time it will take to render that uh, with these 64 samples we'll go and render the image so in a quarter of a second it's, it's render over image but of course there is a difference in the quality so that's that is why when you are we are using a EV will have to compromise on a quality so as per the animation are concerns we will cover that in a upcoming lecture thank you so much for watching